All right. Welcome to Crypto News and Investigative Reports. I'm glad that you're able to join us uh, today. Uh, I want to start by saying uh, I want to give a shout out to everybody who's out there actually making this information public on the uh, cryptocurrency revolution. Um, there is um, a lot of news that's taking place. This is a world changing event. This, uh, the cryptocurrency revolution is a world changing event and um, it, it's, it's enormous. Uh, it, is, it is humongous and it is, it is really changing the way the world uh, moves money. Um, and, and that has a ripple, rippling <laughs> you know, it has a rippling effect, right? And so there's a lot going on in the uh, cryptocurrency industry, uh, the cryptocurrency revolution, the cryptocurrency equal space. There's a lot going on. And I want to give a shout out to everybody that's out there making this information public, uh, that's taking their time on whatever uh, social media that you're using. If you're using YouTube, if you're using uh, Twitter, if you're using Facebook, I want to say continue. Uh, the good work that you're doing so the public will know that um, this this revolution is taking place all right um, so I, and I, I think that's pretty there's a youtuber that puts up he always says uh, the revolution will be televised or something to that effect anyway um, but I just want to say that uh, I give a shout out to all of those youtubers that are, that are um, making this information public doing research getting the best information they can out to the public that's awesome. You guys continue to do it. Uh, I'm listening to your YouTube videos and I'm learning a lot. And I appreciate those that are out there um, making this happen for us. That's an awesome thing. Um, I want to start by saying uh, we were out in San Francisco and we had an opportunity to uh, go to San Francisco, hang in the streets. And um, I saw this shot on the Ripple uh, drop. The ripple drop so I did my best to try to replicate that shot of, of Montgomery Street in San Francisco uh, it was really nice I'll show it again I was like man I want that shot uh, the ripple ripple drop shot right here at the real one Montgomery in San Francisco but we had an awesome time going down there uh, talking to people it was a beautiful day and uh, we had a beautiful day in San Francisco uh, I want to say while we were on the streets talking to people, we met a guy who had bought Ripple XRP at uh, three dollars. He bought Ripple XRP at three dollars, and he told me while I was there, Mike. You know, I tried to get him on camera, but he was on his lunch break. But he said, "Man, buying Ripple at three dollars was great because it's going to be worth thousands of dollars." And so, uh, and now it's down to like thirty cents or twenty-nine cents or something. So. The price of Ripple, the value of Ripple XRP is not in its price right now. It's in the suite of things that they offer, the X Rapid, the X Current, the X Visa, the, you know, the X Spring and whatever else they got going on. That's where the value of Ripple XRP is, all right? And so um, over the weekend, we just took some time off and we went to San Francisco that Friday and went down to Ripple. They're working right there in the front of 301 Montgomery. They're working. It looks like they're working right on the entrance of where Ripple uh, uh, 3, their address, 301 Montgomery, it, it is. But it was such a beautiful day in San Francisco. Um, and I can't wait for the Swell Conference. We're going to be down there for that, talking to people on the streets. Um, and I want to say that if anybody have any questions about, you know, some of the things they're doing in San Francisco, let me know. This was uh, at Embarcadero Station down there right across the street. And um, it was beautiful. And... Uh, <coughs> oh, excuse me. I'm sorry. <coughs> it was a beautiful day. Uh, really. <coughs> Ooh, sorry about that. It was really a nice, uh, nice time. We had a wonderful time uh, being there in San Francisco. All right. Um, so anyway, and that was a shot that I took uh, right across the street. I and mean, there's restaurants, beautiful restaurants. And you get, if you come to Swell, you got to go have some seafood. If you come to San Francisco, you gotta have some uh, some seafood, man. They really got good seafood in San Francisco from the Pacific Ocean. All right. And so, with that being said, um, let, let's get into it. Let's get into it. No, that's not what I want. Uh, that's not. All right, here we go. So once again, thank you everybody uh, for the comments, the good comments, the bad comments. We thank you. Everybody's entitled to their own opinion. Uh, and we appreciate your comments. So let's get with it. 
Uh, let's get ready, get ready, get ready. Here we go. Now, uh, if anybody is watching any of my videos, you know I've been reporting on the central banks, uh, the World Bank, uh, central banks, the International Monetary Fund, and I report on the Federal Reserve. Those are kind of the three uh, things that I pay a lot of attention to because that's the movement of money. And, uh, of course, Ripple XRP is a uh, company that in San Francisco there that is, I uh, have the three wise men working for them. And the three wise men are... Um, uh, Brad Garlinghouse, uh, Chris Larson, and David Schwartz. Uh, those three guys are, are building a great company. Those are your Steve Jobs uh, people in cryptocurrency. That's your uh, uh, Bill Gates person in cryptocurrency. Those are the three wise men. Uh, you know, and I, I equate their what they're doing to what Google or what Apple or what um, Microsoft, what Adobe, what all of those have done for data and uh, for the movement of data and and doing certain type of uh, things on the internet. So I equate uh, uh, Chris Larson, uh, Brad Garlinghouse, and uh, David Schwartz on that level because they're building the internet of value and that's about moving money and uh, primarily payment, the payment structure of the internet. Alright, so uh, let's look at the market. Uh, the Ethereum was at uh, 29 uh, Ethereum low, uh, 29, 29 billion. Uh, let's move up a little bit. I want to see, we'll see uh, Bitcoin, where, where Bitcoin is. There we go. We got Bitcoin at 107 billion. Uh, Ethereum's at 29 billion. XRP's at 10 billion. And uh, Bitcoin Cash is at 9 billion. Uh, these are all market cap numbers. Stellar has moved up to the number five spot at uh, 4 billion. And so, you know, they, these cryptocurrencies are actually uh, are doing pretty good. Um, you know, you're looking at a total market cap right now. Uh, let's see what the market cap is sitting at. Uh, the total market cap is sitting at $206 billion. That's a lot of money, folks. $206 billion. So uh, cryptocurrency is not going anywhere with a market cap of $206 billion. All right. Um, so, you know, it's been up and down. It's been more than that, and it's going to be more than that. Uh, on this next bull run, right? We all know that there is another uh, cryptocurrency bull run coming, and we know this market cap is going to shoot up. We, we know, you know, it's been as high as 300, <clears throat> so 300 billion, and uh, and, and look like we're uh, only at uh, 206 billion right now, and that's a lot of money. Uh, and so let me tell you what you're looking at on the screen here, uh, right here. The headline says. Central banks divided over the future of cryptocurrency. So if you looked at my last video, you saw that uh, I put the real problem with uh, adopting cryptocurrency is that the International Monetary Fund, I've said this on every one of my videos, the International Monetary Fund, the uh, World Bank Central Bank, and the Federal Reserve all has to be on the same page in order to get uh, the uh, adoption of cryptocurrency. But the problem is the International Monetary Fund, they are on, on point. Uh, Christine uh, Legre and Lagarde, uh, uh, she already is from the IMF. The IMF is saying, yeah, uh, cryptocurrency is, is the way to go. Uh, the Federal Reserve, uh, they they're are um, on board for cryptocurrency, except that uh, they are waiting to see what the central banks do. And uh, all of this information is made public through the articles. All the information that I'm getting is reading the articles uh, that, are, that are being put out there, like this article, Central Banks Divided Over Future of Cryptocurrency. And this is the Asian Times. So what we're reporting is that the, there's a central bank problem, number one. Number two, and I don't know if I'm going to get all into these in, in, in the right time frame because these videos are running kind of long. Uh, the central bank problem, that's number one, and that's I talked about that a lot on my last video and on my previous videos. Number two, uh, the crypto exchanges are turning into a, are mimicking the stock market, uh, the NASDAQ, Nikkei, Dow Jones type. You know, you're starting to see that uh, same elements coming into the, uh, the, the crypto exchanges. They're, they're starting to take on some of those issues and it's because they're taking on institutional investors when you take on institutional investors you take on institutional investor problems it, it, that, that's a whole package when you start taking their money 
then you start taking some of the other issues that they bring along with them. I, I'm going to talk about that, hopefully, but I, I don't know if I'm going to get to all of these today, but these are stories that we are working on of Crypto News and Investigative Reports. One of the other things that we're working on is crypto and cryptocurrency. Uh, crypto, uh, cryptocurrency is perfect. Digital asset is perfect for payments, but what about loans? All right, what about loans? Uh, you know, when you're talking about um, the movement of money, uh, what about lending money? So we want to talk about payments versus loans uh, for cryptocurrency. And that's a big issue for the central bank, by the way. Uh, and some of what we, you know, and I haven't made a video in a couple of days. Uh, one is because I was down in San Francisco taking some pictures, looking around at some Coinbase is down there. Uh, uh, you know, and I wanted to get by Coinbase and then I wanted to go by some of the new exchanges. If, you know, and then Ripple, I got down to Ripple and, you know, kind of see their headquarters and stuff down there, too. But uh, and plus, I want to investigate and bring you some real investigative information uh, that's not being told, I guess, because nobody's really talking about this problem of the central banks coming, getting on one page. Uh, and so anyway, this crypto perfect for payment. Crypto is perfect for payments. And, uh, you know, David Schwartz talked about uh, use cases and payments uh, and how well cryptocurrency works for payments. And um, that's why uh, cryptocurrency is really working well with like um, uh, MoneyGram and American Express uh, payment services. Uh, Ripple XRP is the best for payment services. So you can't get any better than Ripple XRP for payment services worldwide peer-to-peer -peer, and even sending money uh th those kinds of things sending money but uh you know ripple xrp said they were signing up a bank a week and so they're really uh really trying to work through uh setting up banking the banking structure for cryptocurrency all right um and so some of this this is what some of these articles are about and then uh, the fourth thing we're working on is the central bank the central bank's confusion, you know, they're sending out such confusion, confusing uh, articles and messaging to, to, the, to the public. Uh, are they going to select Ripple XRP as their uh, go-to cryptocurrency, as mass adoption, uh, their cryptocurrency? Are they not going to select Ripple XRP? Uh, are the central banks going to uh, have their own cryptocurrency? Uh, what are they going to do, like Venezuela try to come up with the Petro? Are, so are these uh, central banks going to have their own cryptocurrency are they or are they going to have their own cryptocurrencies and select a cryptocurrency like Bitcoin or Ripple XRP uh, along with their own cryptocurrency. So the central banks is the problem. The central banks are not sending out us a clear message about what they're going to do. Um, you know, we, we need to find out what the central banks are going to do, how that's going to work, you know. Uh, and then, along with that, the final thing is, um, uh, I already talked about MoneyGram and how those, MoneyGram, Western Union, those kind of payment services, Ripple XRP is perfect for that. Or sending money around the world, Ripple XRP is perfect for that. But then the other uh, uh, nuances about uh, moving money around the world, you know, is different. For instance, like I said earlier, lending or borrowing money. All right, or inflation, or unemployment, or some of those kinds of issues uh, regarding finance. All right, uh, and then I guess I uh, wrote uh, something. The Federal Reserve, uh, uh, since the Federal Reserve is getting confusing messages from um, uh, from the central bank, so the Federal Reserve is thinking about doing something different too. So now you have. The IMF going, okay, we can take this cryptocurrency like Ripple XRP. we got Chris Larson on the high-level advisory board. Then you got uh, the central bank issues. They all have their own regional issues. They don't know what they're going to do. They don't know if they're going to start their own, if they're going to uh, ban cryptocurrency altogether, or if they're going to make one and select one. We have no idea. So the Federal Reserve is starting something called the Fed coin as an alternative. Uh, and they're looking at that. Maybe they're trying to see if that could rival Bitcoin. So let's get into it. Let's get into a couple of these articles. Now, but that's the whole thing in a nutshell. And I wanted to make make it make it appear. So here's this says the central banks divided over the future of cryptocurrency. It says in Venezuela in Venezuela 
in Venezuela recently, uh, President Nichols uh, Morado, blah, blah, blah. Okay, wait. That his government launched a new state-sponsored cryptocurrency called the Petro. He claimed that the, U the U.S. $735 million worth of the new cryptocurrency had already been sold and that observers are skeptical unless unless state entitles have been ob oblong, obliged obliged to buy them. Um, even they will find it hard to do so. However, as the technology platform on which the Petro will be traded has not yet been confirmed. Uh, instead of really reading about the, the Petro, it didn't go anywhere. In fact, they abandoned it and, and the central banks didn't back it up. So, But it's just the fact that it's, it's the confusion uh, about what they're going to do. Um, you know, then now, of course, uh, they start talking about uh, know your customer, uh, money laundering, and fraud. They, they kind of go into that. But the title is, is something, uh, you know, that Asian, the Asian uh, article is, is actually a good article about central banks divided over the future of cryptocurrency. What are, what is the central banks going to do is the issue. What is the central banks going to do? They're sending out confusing messages about they want, what they're going to do. The next article, I'll move along, uh, which is pretty much like that. Um, Bit links blockchain deal with another Caribbean central bank. Now look at this one. It says Barbados backed blockchain startup Bit is partnering with the central bank of Caraco in St. Martin uh, to look into issuing a central bank backed digital currency for the two nations. All right. So the problem here is that you got the central bank talking about they're going to start their own cryptocurrency. And they're going to work together to support these two nations to build their own cryptocurrency. These Caribbean nations to have their own cryptocurrency. All right. So we're we're trying to find out. You know, is it going to be what 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 they going to do? You know, are they going to have their own cryptocurrency? Are they going to um, are they going to work with the central bank? Are they just? I mean, what you know? This is part of the confusion that the central banks keep sending out about cryptocurrency uh, you know here here's this this article is saying and what's the date on this article uh, August 13th this is today August 13 2018 so is the central is are they gonna are they gonna have their own uh, it says the central bank is determined to address its challenges proactively proactive by exploring the latest technology available for example to reduce the level of cash usage within the monetary union and to facilitate more secure, more AML, uh, and that's money laundering and know your customer complaint, and more efficient financial transaction within, within and between Caraco and San Martin. And so, you know, so the, this article today came out in uh, CoinDesk is talking about them building their own, them starting their own cryptocurrency between the two nations. So this central bank is talking about, you know, putting their own cryptocurrency together. How are you going to get quote-unquote mass adoption or adoption of any kind when none of these entities, especially the central bank, is not on board? The central bank is not on board, especially if they're going to uh, try to put their own. Now, here's another article. Saudi Arabia, and this is today, August 13, 2018. These are more of the mixed messages that the central bank is sending out. Saudi Arabia, Bitcoin trading is illegal in the kingdom. Now, what, what in the world is that? It says, um, a standing committee comp comprised of various governmental ministries and the Central Bank of Saudi Arabia has warned that trading of unauthorized cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin is illegal in the country. In a statement published by the Saudi Arabia Monetary Authority, the sovereign Arab state defiant central bank on Sunday, a governmental committee declared that it was against trading of cryptocurrencies. The reason it claimed were due to their negative consequences and high risk on traders since they are beyond the preview of governmental supervision. What? Okay, so uh, uh, here's another situation where a central bank is saying, uh, the Saudi central bank is saying it's illegal. Bitcoin is illegal. Okay, and that's just like China thing had a ban on cryptocurrencies what what's the deal with the central banks you know in order to get any kind a, a solid regulatory policy to get any kind of, of government uh, um, 
uh, regulatory policy, fiscal policy, uh, any kind of uh, any you know any laws governing anything. They're all going to have to be on one page and 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 work together with cryptocurrency. That's what I see. But you know the central banks are sending out us different messages now. Let me add my two cents in about why I think this is happening. The reason why I think the central banks is not coming on board as fast as the IMF and the Federal Reserve is because the central banks have re their regional banks. And the issue with regional banks is they have problems that are specific, uh, specific to their own country. And so they, they have to look at what their, their country, what's going on in their country. The central banks get money, lend money to the commercial banks. And so that's a that's a problem, lending money. And so if you're talking about cryptocurrency coming in and moving all around in this 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 whole uh, system, you, you you know, you gotta talk about cryptocurrency in the lending and and not only lending, but uh borrowing. I mean, you know, well lending and and and, and um uh, uh uh you know establishing cryptocurrency in that situation. So I think that that's kind of the problem. Um, they're just not sure where cryptocurrency really fits with central banks because they, they're not sure that they, you know, the central banks lend money to commercial bank, commercial bank lend money to the uh, to the customers. And, and, you know, does cryptocurrency work with all of that? Central banks are saying they don't know. That's why they're saying maybe we should start our own cryptocurrency or maybe we should ban cryptocurrency. You know, central banks just don't know what to do. And we don't know, you know, we can't make any assumptions that they're going to select any cryptocurrency for some type of adoption because they don't know what they're going to do. All right. And so let's keep going. Here's one more. I'm, I'm kind of running long, but here's another one. Central Bank of Netherlands refuses to recognize cryptos as money. And this is today too, August 13th on CryptoCoin News. Central Bank of Netherlands refuses to recognize cryptos as crypto as money. So you know all of this is 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 a, is is an issue when it comes to quote unquote like uh, being adopted globally, uh, despite the fact that the Netherlands remains Bitcoin friendly as a country. Its central bank newly released comments say that the banking sector still refuses to recognize Bitcoin as well as other cryptos as real money. See, uh, Bitcoin doesn't fulfill these three functions and it goes on to talk about what Bitcoin doesn't do for them. So here's another central bank issue. Uh, and let's keep going so we can wrap this up uh, because I think you get the gist of what I'm talking about today. Uh, here we go. Regulation roundup. Central bank issues digital currency. Regulatory clarity. Uh -huh. In a recent regulatory news, Spain's central bank has issued a report favoring development of crypto of central bank issued digital currency. The president of Taiwan's central bank has advocated caution regarding cryptocurrency. The Blockchain Research Institute has published a summary on recent roundtable discussions calling for great regulatory clarity, and a Russian court has warned a publishing company for breaching advertising legislation which an ad pertaining to cryptocurrencies. So, folks, anybody that's saying that this, these entities are coming together, these entities are not. The IMF, the Federal Reserve, and the world, central banks all got to come together, get on one page for any cryptocurrency to be selected. Now, what I, I want to share this with you. Ripple XRP, on the other hand, is a payment. David Schwartz talked about use cases and talked about everything stemming from payments. So you can see Ripple XRP being used for money ground payments, Western Union payments, Apple or uh, Amazon payments. People buy something and they pay. Ripple is all over that with their software. With the software that they've created, they're all over that. All right. Um, they're the number one for payments right now. They have the best use case for payments. They have the best software for payments. They have a cryptocurrency that works for payments that can save uh, uh, people like Amazon and, and other companies like that could save them money. When it comes to banking worldwide, 
that's a whole different that's a whole different uh, story okay that that's not gonna be you won't get mass adoption in, in 15 16 months from now uh, you're gonna only get uh, ripple XRP being probably accepted and it's my my opinion is that they're going to be accepted in, in payment in, just in, in the payment sector right now but you know and maybe payments in banking sector and so with all of this crypto, with all of this uh, uncertainty with the central banks, with all of the uncertainty with central banks, with it being not really clarifying their position and with us not really knowing, like from these articles that came out today, we don't really know what the central banks are going to do. Are they going to build their own cryptocurrency? Uh, are they going to support their own cryptocurrency? Are they not going to support their Are they going to ban cryptocurrency? What are they going to do? Well, that's making the feds nervous. So the fed came out not too long ago with this article and this is from the New York Times this is a New York Times article that came out a while back uh, on May 4th 2018 May 4th should the Fed create FedCoin a rival to Bitcoin a former top of this official says maybe and so you can see the because of the uncertainty that that is coming from the central banks we don't know what the central banks are going to do well the fed is saying well maybe we should make our own cryptocurrency too because we don't know what the central banks are going to do so therein lies the problem folks i think you got the message today that we're looking at uh we're looking at three uh we're looking at three entities the international monetary fund the world bank central bank and the federal reserve that's where money is flowing that's where the money moves and so with those three entities not being on the same page the central bank they're all over the place we don't know what in the world they're going to do uh the imf is saying ripple is good we could use that maybe we could use bitcoin too and the fed is going well if they want to use ripple we got a, a, a faster payment task force that we could put together we've already worked on it for a long time they can come together get the fed together and use Ripple XRP. If not, well, we have to use file a, a Fed coin or something else because we don't know what everybody's going to be doing with this. So, folks, um, we're going to stay on this story. We're going to continue to report on it. It's a lot. Uh, it's a lot going on. Uh, like I said, uh, and that's causing uh, un unstable. As you know, the market, the cryptocurrency market, that's continuing to keep the volatility there because we don't know what the central banks are going to do. Uh, we know it. You know. We know everything is, they're trying to get everything in place. Yeah, but if we're talking about global, then we, we got some more issues we got to clear up. But if we're just talking about payments like MoneyGram, Western Union, that kind of thing, I really believe that Ripple XRP is going to be a king in, in that, that area. But it's going to be a while before we see any type of adoption the US dollar is not going anywhere and cryptocurrency at a market cap of 205 billion dollars 205 billion dollars is not a threat to any fiat currency as well as I think when I looked at the GNP uh, that's not even they make in, 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 in 2017 it was almost uh, uh, 175 billion dollars I think it was when I was trying to find how much the first quarter of the uh, of market a fiat market cap how much fiat money's out there so fiat money's not a threat to cryptocurrency right now so the central banks are not really you know they're taking their time dragging their feet throwing out a bunch of confusion to us about what they're going to do but nevertheless there is 205 billion dollars in the market that is a lot of money somebody's going to be paying attention to that such as institutional investors and um, uh, they're, they're going to be putting things together to get into this market. All right, I'm going to have to cut off right there. Um, stay tuned. Keep it up. Like I said, I, I'm just kind of reporting on the news that comes out. I'm just kind of giving you my take on what's going on. And, um, you know, if you're enjoying the content that we're putting out, we're trying to just give you content that you can study and look up and check yourself. Um, please subscribe to our channel, Crypto News and Investigative Reports. Uh, if you if you're enjoying us, you can leave. Please leave some comments, questions. I'd like to know what you think about this whole central bank issue that I just brought out. 
Um, if you have some insight that I need, please uh, let me know. And if you have something we'd like to investigate, talk about, please let me know. Um, all right. Uh, until the next time, wherever you are, have a great day. All right. If it's nighttime where you are, wherever you are, have a great night. All right. We'll talk to you again tomorrow. Thank you for watching.